today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to relocate a Mr. Cool DIY condensing unit. Now, this is super simple and there's no vacuum or any specialty tools needed to do this relocation. That's one of the great features about Mr. Cool DIY products is there's very minimal tools involved. In this particular instance, I had the Mr. Cool condenser over on the back of my garage, but I had a bunch of extra lines set and I actually wanna move it about six to seven feet over to the right. And so I'm gonna disconnect the lines and unspool them so as not to kink them. You definitely wanna be careful about kinking them. Um, it can be pretty easy to do sometimes, but I think this is gonna be a really easy project so let's get right into it. All right, so this is the unit that we're going to be moving. And as you can see back here, we have a bunch of spooled line set. So we should have plenty of length to move it over. And where we're gonna be putting it is long ways right here. We're gonna be redoing this fence, but I wanna put this mini split here so that I can put our condenser here for videos. And I think it's gonna be a lot nicer that way. So the two things that we're gonna to have to extend well, the line set, we won't have to extend. We just have to detach it and reconnect it. But the electrical, we're going to have to extend this, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. And the electrical here, we're gonna extend as well. So we're just gonna run new wire from our box there through this conduit. We're gonna get longer half inch conduit and it should be pretty easy. So the first thing we need to do is take this cover off, which we will then expose the king valves in here and these lines that we need to take loose. All right, so now that we have that cover off, we can see our king valves, which are these two here. This is the service port for checking the refrigerant. We don't have to touch that. We're just going to open both of our king valve covers here. And what you'll see behind these two nuts is two Allen key bolts. These are the valves that allow this refrigerant to flow freely into the line set. Now these lines are pre-charged, but if we were to just disconnect this, these king valves would allow this refrigerant to flow out of this fitting. So before we disconnect these, we need to tighten these down all the way, and then we can loosen our two fittings here. So this is a V5. We're just simply going to close this all the way until it seats, just like that. You don't have to overdo it. Same for the liquid side. And that's it. Now we are ready to loosen these connections. And this is the actual connection we want to loosen. You don't want to loosen these. These come with the system attached to the service valve already. So these ones swivel, as you can see that little gap there. So we're gonna loosen this one and this one. Okay, so this part is pretty critical. See how loose that is? You don't want to try and loosen this or this with one singular wrench. This is where you wanna untighten, but you want to make sure and hold this piece in place, and then we're gonna break this one loose. Here we go. Okay, so now that it's loose, we're gonna do this pretty quickly. You might get a little tiny spurt of refrigerant because these lines are pre-charged, and that's totally normal. I think I just heard that tiny little spurt and that was it. Okay, that's it. So this is our quick loss fitting, low loss fitting. There is nothing that's going to escape and that's the beauty of this system. So let's now move on to this next one. Whoa. All right, easy as that. We heard another little spurt and that was it. So now all we have to do is disconnect our electrical and we'll be good to move the unit. All right, so next what we need to do is make sure that the power is off at the unit. So we're just gonna pull our disconnect, throw it on top. We can also verify under this panel that we have no juice uh, with a voltmeter, but we're gonna remove this panel and then take our wiring off. Okay, so now that we have this off, we're just gonna make a note of these colors. So we have red on number one, white on number two, black on number three, and then line one and two don't matter. So just go ahead and pull these off. And our ground. There we go. Easy as that. This unit is free now. We can move it onto our pad in our other location, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is slowly work these line sets behind our freezer here. 
And we're not gonna pull this out like this. We're gonna kind of unspool it gradually like this. Just being careful not to kink these lines. All right, folks, so we have our line set run. It still has a little bit of a spool right back here. That line is actually a lot longer than it seems like. And this is where we permanently mounted the condenser. We leveled out this pad, secured it with some screws there. And it's going to be outputting air this way and pulling it from that side. And our lines are gonna connect right here. So we still have our spool there, which is totally fine. And it's as easy as reattaching these. I'm gonna crank it down. Before we do that, I'm gonna make sure that these are both tight because one of them was kind of loose, but I don't think nothing was leaking. But we'll verify that and check the charge when we're done. But that's not really something you have to do. And then once we're done with the refrigerant lines, we'll simply open these king valves and this portion will be totally done. Okay, so we've got our lines started here and we're just gonna do the same thing, but in reverse. Want to hold this down with one adjustable and tighten it with the other. So you're gonna give that a snug and move on to our suction side here. Just give that on a snug. So that's it. Refrigerant lines are ready to go. Okay, last thing we need to do is reopen these just until they seat like that. And that's it. We can throw our caps back on and then the refrigerant lines are complete. Okay. Okay, so for our electrical, what we're gonna wanna do is turn off the breaker that supplies our disconnect. So for us, we're going to locate the garage mini split. That's gonna be the second breaker from the top. So right here, we're gonna flip that guy off and we should have zero power out at our disconnect. Okay, so now that we have no power here, we're just going to pull this cover off and confirm. So to confirm, we're just gonna go from each line to ground. And if this stays in auto, that means that there is no voltage. Nothing there, nothing there. Okay, so we're good to start taking this off. Okay, so the one that we're going to be removing is these inner two. You can tell by where they say load, load, and then our ground. So we'll start by removing this black one. I'm going to re-snug this because these lugs can actually fall out if you leave them on there too loose. I had to go searching for one one time, so I'd like to make it a habit of snugging it back down. And then the ground that comes from the whip is this one here. So I'll go ahead and pop that guy off. Okay, so next what we're gonna need to do is extend our communication lines. And we're going to be using basically the same type of wire. It has four wires inside, same gauge. And we need to make sure that we keep this out of the elements. And so what we've done here is we took an exterior uh, weather rated box and for these female half inch ends, we just took a piece of conduit and cut it. And it's just small like this. And then we fed in a female adapter. So we can now thread in our conduit to this one. And then we can thread in our other side to this guy. So it's all weatherproof. And then we'll just make our connections inside. So we'll show you once we get this mounted, what it looks like and how everything is weather tight and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what we've got. So basically this threaded on, this is all completely watertight. We're just gonna match these colors, white to white, red to red, black to black, green to green. Then we're gonna slap a cover on and we're gonna mount it behind this fridge so it's out of the way. But that's basically how you extend it. And then over at this end, we're just going to use another strain relief at the condenser and make our connections just like before. Okay, so that's the finished product. Everything is watertight and sealed. We can just go ahead and rotate this whichever way we want it, mount it back there, and then we'll make our connection at the condenser. Okay, so now that we have our old one disconnected, what we're gonna do is we have a brand new spool of 25 feet of half inch conduit, and we have these straight fittings. 
Now these are extremely easy to use. I think I got these at Home Depot. Basically they just slide on and you twist until it stops and that's it. And you thread it on and that is as easy as it gets pretty much. So we're gonna feed this up into our box. We're gonna put this nut back on. And then what we're actually going to do is attach this at both points, at the condenser and then at this box. And then we're going to run a snake into this conduit and we're just gonna fish our wire through and it's gonna make it really easy. Sometimes this takes a little bit of finesse. And if you have this side available, you can spin the bottom and get it nice and snug. Okay, so that ends good. We're going to run the conduit over to our condenser and then attach it there as well, and then we'll fish our wire through. Okay, so we have our conduit run, and it's coming over here to the condenser. We have this at the right length to where we need it, but before we connect that, we're going to run our Milwaukee snake through there, and then we're going to tie our 10 gauge wire to it, and we're gonna pull it through. So we're gonna start by feeding this into that side all the way through until it comes through here, then we'll attach this and pull it through. So we're just gonna feed this through. There we have it. I'm just gonna feed it down and go on the other side of this wire here. All right, now we have our snake. We're going to attach our Rumex to this and simply pull it through. All right, so we just have these wires um, looped around. We're gonna pinch it as tight as we can get them and that should slip right through very easily. We'll hop over to the other side, start pulling it through, and see what we got. Help it along here a little bit. Just once we get past this conduit, should be golden. All right, got it all the way through. So we're simply gonna pull these back. And just like that, that worked like a charm. What I ended up doing is pulling out a little bit of length and then actually using some pliers to pull on the middle cable. And I sprayed a little bit of WD-40 down here and that helped as well. So next what we're gonna do is throw our conduit liquid tight connector on. Gonna snug this up that we can't anymore. That's it. We're going to tighten that, and we are ready to make our final connections. So we'll go ahead and put this on our old cover that we took off before. And then for the other one right here, we're going to put a strain relief connector, and we're going to run that new cable through that guy. Now how these liquid tight connections work is this goes over the wire, and then when you tighten this down, it will actually squeeze the wire against this, and it will keep it from moving. Okay, so one of the things that the Mr. Cool and some of the mini splits have is there's a screw right here. So we took this whole thing off earlier, but basically you can take this portion off and you can just attach this one, make your wiring connections, and then attach the new cover to this one. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw the screw down in the middle there. Okay, so now that that's secured, we can go ahead and make our final connections here. These are obviously super long, but what we'd like to do is maybe put a little loop here. That way you have some additional wiring in case you need to change anything later, or you could go straight to it. Either way is totally fine. So we're gonna strip our wire about right here. That way it'll give us a little bit more flexibility. So what we'll do is just cut it straight up like this. In today's, and then I'm probably gonna cut it about right here, just like that. Okay, so we're just gonna make a little loop right here. And then these two wires went to L1 and L2. That's our high voltage wires. And then of course, ground to ground. Right, perfect. So that's done. All we have to do now is our four 
uh, comms wires be golden. I think for these, I'll probably just go straight up. We're gonna cut these about right here. Okay, so red, white, and black was the order uh, that we removed these. So we're just gonna put them back in that same order. Go back through and just make sure all of these are snug. And then for this ground, we're actually gonna put this connector on right here. And we're gonna attach it to that other group of grounds there. And we're just gonna use this butt connector slash wire stripper tool that's gonna crimp down on it. Ground is attached and that, my friends, is the last step. All right, so everything is done here. Our connections have been made. We just need to button it up at the disconnect and then we'll be ready to fire it up. All right, so basically the last thing we need to do is just connect this here at the disconnect. So again, we're gonna leave ourselves enough to make a little loop here. Cut our Romex all the way down there at the base. Give ourselves plenty of room to work with. There we go. And again, the polarity does not matter on this. Um, if you want to get technical, you should probably wrap these white wires with black electrical tape or red to signify that they're hot. But it's pretty clear that we're just using this as another hot. But I'm sure someone will comment on it, as they always do. All right. Lastly, our ground. Gonna make sure these other lugs are nice and tight here. Just gonna push these in, so then we can throw our cover back on, and we're ready to turn our breaker back on. We can go ahead and pop this in since we're ready to go live with it. And back here at the breaker, garage mini split is the second one down. That's the one we turned off. Grab our controller here. And there we go. We're gonna bump this down to 68 degrees. We'll give it a second and uh, check outside. There we have it. I just heard the fan kick on. Already spitting out heat. We'll give it just a second and then we'll check the lines and make sure they're nice and cold. Here's our refrigerant blowing through, super cold. All right, guys, as you can see, I've freed up this space so I can now install the AC that I'm gonna use for demo uh, videos and stuff like that in my garage. And our unit is over here running nice and quietly, blowing out a lot of heat. And let's show you what we're blowing out at the unit inside here. And as you can see right here, we're blowing out 41.5 degree air nice and cold that is the beauty of the mr cool diy series does not have to have a vacuum or any specialty tools uh, we moved this in a couple hours and we're back in business so well i hope you guys found this video informative whether you're looking to relocate your condensing unit outside or if you just wanted to learn a little bit more about the mr cool diy series i truly love this ac unit we've had it in for about a year and a half zero problems whatsoever um, it keeps the place nice and cold in the summertime and warm in the winter time now if you want to see the full installation video from start to finish on this guy you can find that video right here and i'm sure you'll enjoy it as well until next time you guys be safe later